Something we take great pride in here at Skill Builders is developing techniques that will save Oracle users money. And when it comes to Oracle licensing, there is a lot to be saved. Today, I want to show how it is possible to deliver the benefits of transparent data encryption with just a standard edition license. So what is transparent data encryption, or TDE? It's a wonderful technology, a declarative technique for encrypting some or all of your data behind the back of the application software. That's what transparent means. I, the DBA, enable it, and the programmers need do nothing. It will work with your own in-house developed applications, with ad hoc query tools, and also with any third-party off-the-shelf applications you may have, delivering instant compliance with all relevant regulations. But there's a problem. Licensing. It needs Enterprise Edition, plus another $15,000, will be advanced security option. That's a total of $62,500 per processor core factor. So what do you do if you don't have such resources? If all you have is standard edition, perhaps only an SE1 license, which is as little as 5,800 per CPU. Traditionally, you would do it programmatically. You would use DBMS Crypto to encrypt the data. This was a de massive development workload. And even worse, it was impossible to retrofit encryption using such techniques to a third party application. What I'm going to demonstrate today is techniques for getting equivalent functionality to TDE with standard edition. Functionality should be identical, totally transparent to the application software, the users don't know what's happening, and the developers need to do nothing. And just like TDE, it will work with all applications, even ad hoc query tools like SQL Plus. The only difference between this technique and TDE is the licensing. The technique I'm going to show you is free. Let us consider just the standard demonstration table, scott.emp. And as an example, I'm going to take the ename column and encrypt it. Why would we have to encrypt the ename column? Never mind why. Any column will do. I'll just use ename for this example. First, we need to create two functions. One function that will accept a clear text input and return it encrypted, and another function that will take encrypted data and return it as clear text. I've done that already, just to save a bit of time. I've got a function called toenc, takes a parameter of clear text, returns as encrypted as a raw. And my other function is to clear, and that takes as input an encrypted raw and returns it as a clear text bar char two. For example, select to enc John from your, and that is the encrypted version. To reverse that, I can select to clear of the encrypted string, and back comes the clear text. Now, the algorithm I'm using, by the way, is the triple DES algorithm with cipher block chaining. And under the covers, it's using DBMS Crypto, which does support all of the commonly used encryption algorithms and hash checksums that are available. So we develop our two functions, to enc and to clear. Second, as a once only exercise, we need to encrypt all the existing data. Now, as you can see, the encrypted strings are longer than the clear text strings. So I will need to modify the column first to make sure that the table doesn't run to store the encrypted data. And I'll just raise ename up to 20 bytes. Then, as a one-off exercise, encrypt the data. Update emp set ename equals to enc ename. And what does my data look like now? All my employee names are encrypted. My next step is to rename the encrypted table 
we rename emp to emp enc, and cover the table with a view. Create view emp and select empno to clear ename job mgr hard date salcom defno from emp enc. So my view is projecting all the columns of the table and decrypting as it does so. So selecting, so from now, if I select star from emp enc, which is the disk based structure, everything is encrypted. But if I select star from emp, which is all my application users will ever do, we see clear text. So select is now fixed. Now that's only half the story. What about DML? How do we maintain the transparent encryption from now on? We need to use instead of triggers for that. Here's an example of such a trigger. Create or replace trigger enc ename instead of insert on emp. Begin. And my trigger is invoking a procedure I prepared earlier, enc insert. And that takes the new values that the users have inserted processes them and inserts them into the table. So let's see what actually happens. If I insert into emp, emp no ename values 99 John, looks okay. Put in another row, insert into emp, emp no ename values 98 Dave. Query the data, with select star from emp, and my end users see the clear text that they just inserted. But what do we have on disk? Encrypted values. So through the design of the view, I'm intercepting all of the select and DML statements, redirecting them through functions that will transparently encrypt and decrypt. So to conclude, what have I been trying to demonstrate? We all know that encryption for compliance is an awful job, but we also know that there is no choice. You have to do it. TDE is an excellent solution if you have the licenses. Using our technique, data is encrypted on disk and in the buffer cache in a way that is totally transparent to the application and uses only standard edition facilities. Of course, I have to give you a warning. Using functions and triggers like this will almost certainly require a fair amount of optimization. And of course, the design will be somewhat more complicated than my simple demonstration. But I hope you'll agree that if that technique brings your license costs down from over $60,000 per core to less than $6,000 per CPU, well, that should more than cover the effort required using a technique such as the one I described.